Bunch, bunch of country boys from South Park County. Being <laughs> yes. New York City, being on national TV was a big deal. And to win the whole thing was, well, as I would say down here, they were in high pot. <laughs> yes. And uh, my dad, I remember him saying, they'd walk up and down the streets of New York City and people would stop them and say, hey, aren't you guys that won the Dodger program? <laughs> just a you know just an explosion for their their career. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, all of America, for the first time, heard gospel quartet music. Mm -hmm. Praise so it's God. Quite an exciting time. Mm -hmm. Some of you know the next chapter. Yeah. In our group's history, in our family, and and uh, we'll touch on it just briefly. You know, a few years before that, the group had moved from they moved to. Iowa in the 1940s, they moved back south to be in Memphis in, in uh, 1950. We started flying by private plane, then they were able to fly, you know, fly great distances, travel great distances, and see more people. So that was already part of their uh, routine. And uh, shortly after winning the Godwin program, they were sitting in a little town over here in uh, Alabama, Clanton, Alabama. They flown in that day. My cousin R.W., who sang there, told the group, the bass singer Bill Lyles, or the pilot, co pilot of the plane, and they were going to be taking off after dark that night. They wouldn't be sure they had the lay of the runway, so they built our W, hopped in the plane, and we were going to just make a practice run. We never knew exactly what happened, but something terribly wrong occurred, and the plane just went straight up and saw and crashed and burned right there on the airfield. They were all young men. My dad was 34, our W and Bill were a year or two younger than him. And you know, just a couple of weeks before, they'd been to New York City, <laughs> you know, national TV, won the whole thing, just on top of the world, and it literally came crashing down two weeks later in Clanton. Mm. My dad made the second he would never sing again. Mm. But God had other plans. Mm. And I share that with you, not just for a couple of reasons. One, to just let you know a little, a little bit more about our history and what the Black Brothers had, had been through. But more importantly, to tell you this, there's not a person in this room tonight whose life has not been touched by some kind of tragedy. It might not be quite that horrific, but it might be. If it's a, a car accident or a, a divorce or a, a death of a loved one, a disease, a bad financial report, medical report, whatever it might be, a child that goes astray, a grandchild that's Away. It, it doesn't matter. We all have those seasons and circumstances in our life. It touches us all. And we, we came, one of the reasons we came tonight is to tell you this. Just like we found in our family 60 years ago at that event, is you don't have to let tragedy define you, and you don't have to let it defeat you. Amen. And you may be going through a season tonight where... Like I just described, things don't look too rosy. Well, let me tell you, the Bible promises us that Jesus is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That he will never leave you and forsake you. The psalmist David said it this way, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, Lord, because you're with me. Amen. We have a promise on the word of God tonight to you. Whatever you're walking through, the Lord will walk through that valley with you. Yes. And you may feel like you're all alone and you have no one to care. But let me tell you tonight, you have someone who cares for you. You're his child. Yes. He loves you. Amen. Thank you. 